The hamster didn't bite, and Julian was quite fond of it. All went well until the day he said, The poor thing must get tired of being in that cage all the time and running round and round in that wheel. Do you think we could let it out for a run round the carpet? It seemed such a quiet creature and so sweet-tempered that Sarah said, Well, I'm sure it wouldn't do any harm to let it out for a little while if you keep your eye on it. It's too big to go down a mouse hole. But the hamster went behind the settee and wouldn't come out. And when Sarah and Julian moved the settee away from the wall, there was no sign of the hamster. And when Pat came home, there was no tea ready, and Sarah and Julian were creeping about all over the house, looking for the hamster and calling to it. But there was neither sight nor sound of it. Then Pat said, What's this hole under the settee? And Sarah said, What hole? Oh. And they saw the teeth marks all round the hole, and they knew who had made them. Then Pat took the back of the settee to see if the hamster was inside. There was a pile of sawdust where the hamster had been nibbling, but no hamster. Then Julian looked behind the television set and saw a hole in the skirting board, and Pat moved the television so that they could see it properly. When Alf called in to borrow a bag of sugar, they showed him the hole. That's a hamster hole, all right, he said. They love gnawing wood. It's in their nature. It'll be right under the floor now, nibbling away to its heart's content. You'll have to have the floor up. You'll never get it out. It'll have the floor caved in after a time. Oh, dear, said Sarah. That'll never do. It'll cost a fortune. You ought to get a dog, said Alf. They make the best pet you can have, and they're useful for getting sheep in. We haven't got any sheep, said Pat. No, but you've got a hamster, said Alf. Perhaps our Towser could get it out. He brought his little dog in. It snuffled at the hole and wagged its tail like mad, but it couldn't get the hamster out. But Pat had an idea. I'll catch the hamster, he said. You'll never get it in a bucket, said Alf. No, but I bet you I can still get it, said Pat. That night, after Julian had gone to bed, Pat got his old baby bath out and put it near the hole the hamster had made. He put some hamster food in the empty bath, then he found a long piece of wood and leaned it against the bath. The wood made a path up to the edge of the bath. The sides of the bath were high and slippery. Are you thinking of giving that hamster a bath? said Sarah. It might need one, said Pat. But it must be getting hungry. When we've gone to bed, it's sure to come out. The idea is that it will walk up the wood, jump in the bath for the food, and not be able to climb out again up the slippery sides. <laughs> It's not as daft as that, said Sarah. It'll never work. Hamsters have more brains than mice. When Pat went to bed, he lay awake in the dark. When all the house was quiet, there was, Pat felt sure, a tiny sound of little paws and nibbling teeth. Pat crept downstairs with his torch. There, in the empty bath, sat a rather dusty hamster, blinking in the light. On Wednesday afternoon, Pat took the hamster back to Pencaster in its cage and came back with a large sheepdog. Julian called the dog Bess, after one of the mice. He loved her. She was a very lively dog and had to go for a long walk every day. She never sat still. When Pat was out with his letters and Julian was at school, Sarah and Bess walked the hills all over Greendale. Then Sarah got a job in the council office in Pencaster. What would happen to Bess? She'll have to come with me in my van, said Pat. 
But, oh dear, Bess was hopeless in Pat's van. She wouldn't stay in her basket. One day she chewed the corner of a parcel. She jumped out and chased hens. She ran off looking for sheep to round up, and it took Pat an hour to find her. She even followed Pat and growled at Miss Hubbard when she came out for a parcel. Well, said Miss Hubbard, I've heard of postmen being chased by dogs, but never t'other way round, as Pat shooed Bess back to the van. That dog needs training, Pat. You're right, said Pat, and I've no notion about how to do it. Colonel Forbes is on the lookout for another sheepdog, said Miss Hubbard, and he's a dab hand at training dogs. He'd soon get her into shape. Why don't you have a word with him? I will, said Pat. Colonel Forbes was delighted. She's just the dog for me, he said. Bring her round on Monday and we'll make a start with her. So it was all settled. But Pat and Sarah and Julian were sad. They would miss Bess far more than they had missed the hamster and the mice. As Pat said, for all her fault, she's a loving creature. But I can't be having the post late whilst I'm chasing all over Greendale to find her when she takes it into her head to wander off, silly lass. Monday came. Julian looked tearful as he said goodbye to Bess. Don't take on, said Pat. You'll be able to go round to the Colonel's to see her any time you like. I know, said Julian, but he still looked tearful. Pat had delivered all his letters, and it was time to take Bess to Colonel Forbes. Pat drove along with Bess by his side. He felt tearful himself. Just as they were passing Alf Thompson's bottom meadow, Bess began to make a fuss. Oh, you don't want to get out, do you? said Pat, just when we're a bit late. But Bess did want to get out. She barked and whined until Pat stopped the van. Well, be quick then, said Pat. Bess jumped out, but she still whined at Pat. Oh, what is it now? said Pat in a cross voice. She wanted him to get out and look. Pat came. Bess led him to a cardboard box stuck in the hedge. She sniffed and whined and wagged her tail. She nosed at the box. What is it, Bess? said Pat. Pat lifted the lid of the box. Well, I'll be blessed, said Pat. How did you know that was there? Curled up in the bottom of the box was a little black and white kitten. Pat picked it up gently, and it opened its eyes and meowed at him. Poor little thing, said Pat. Who can have left you there? Bess gave it a kiss with her long wet tongue that made it sneeze. Good girl, said Pat. And this is how Pat arrived home that day, without Bess, but with a kitten tucked up in his warm coat. Let's call it Jess, said Julian. And they did. They all loved Jess. He didn't run away or chase hens or chew holes in the floor or make people scream in the bus. He has ridden in the van every day with Pat from that day to this. Pat says, he's grand company as our Jess. As for Bess, she became a very good sheepdog. She loves nothing better than a good day out working the sheep on the fells. And the shepherd often brings her to see Pat and Sarah and Julian and her old friend Jess. Postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat and his black and white cat. Early in the morning. Just as day is dawning, he picks up all the post bags in his van. <laughs> 